Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today I am going to be painting a Moon Knight Chibi from 3DXM, and I'll put the link to that model in the description below. But the best part is, is I'm going to show you a technique for creating a sand effect without using sand. But before we get started, I just wanted to take a quick second to let you guys know that I have officially created a Patreon. So if you want a more exclusive behind the scenes video and chatting with me on my private Discord channels, or get to vote on the videos that I put out, then this is going to be the thing for you. So I'll put a link to that in the description, but I also have my free YouTube community Discord channel that is text only. So, if you're interested in either one, feel free to join them, and let's go ahead, jump over to the table, and get started on this Moon Knight. So first, I went ahead and applied a black primer to the entire model in all of the pieces. After that, I applied a Zenithal highlight using white ink, and I only sprayed it from the top of the model to be able to see where those highlights are going to be and where those shadows will lie on the model. And you can see the final result of how it really gives you that definition of knowing where like the light from above is coming from and where the shadows are. All right, so now I have my Moon Knight with the Zenithal highlight and his torso is not glued on. I just have that separate so I can access underneath here. Now I'm going to be doing a dry brush all over this guy with this pale gray. Now the whole point of the Zenithal highlight is to help me give some definition to where my highlights are coming from. So I know I can hit the dry brush harder up here and lighter down here because I'm just trying to get some color. Now, at first I'm going to be using a bigger dry brush to get some of these big areas, but when I get into these smaller detail areas, I'm going to be using a smaller, more focused dry brush. Alright, so here we go. I am just going to start with this pale gray, squirt out some on my texture board, and get to work. Okay, so now I've got all of the dry brushing that I'm wanting done to this done. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and start in on some of this trim work. Now I'm going to make it gold. I'm gonna make all the gold trim using this brushed gold. And I'm gonna take my wonderful magnifying glasses so I can actually see this. just wanted to take a quick second and say thanks for watching and if you like what you're seeing feel free to hit that subscribe button all right so the next thing I'm doing is I'm adding some texture to this cape and all I'm doing is a stippling technique I'm getting some paint on my brush of of the cottage white and I'm just stamping it around and doing a really random stippling effect and then just kind of fading it out and this will give me a nice textured look because I don't want it just solid white and I want to leave some of that darkness for the shadow so you can see here of how we can get a rough looking uh, stippling pattern so I'm just going to go all the way around the hood and on the back of the cape So you can see there, that is the kind of look we're going for, and I'm just gonna keep at it and kind of feather it down, because I want it bright right here. Thank you. 
Next was time for the eyes, and I went ahead and just took some white ink with my airbrush and just sprayed those eyes nice and bright white. Once I was done, I took this glow-in-the-dark white paint and just kind of sprayed it right over top of that white. I just thought it would be cool to have glow-in-the-dark eyes on Moon Knight since his eyes do glow. Now to move on to the base. What I've gone ahead and done is put some Silly Putty over all of those little rocks right there so none of the effect that I'm going to do gets on them and it peels off really easily. I'm going to be basically doing the same thing I do for my snow effect. I'm using just pure baking soda and then using watered down Mod Podge and I've also already got it watered down and in a spray bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and all I'm going to do is spray this down real good, get everything nice and wet with this glue, and then just cover it with baking soda. So if you haven't seen me do this effect yet for my snow, you can see that video right up here. Now my snow effect and sand effect are pretty much identical except for, you guessed it, I paint the snow tan and that is going to make it look like a realistic sand gritty looking texture. So here we go. All right, so there we go. It is completely covered in baking soda and I've probably wasted a ton, but I don't care. And all I'm going to do is just kind of peel this up. That way it doesn't stick. All right, so now I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna just come back to it after it's all dry. And then we're going to clean this up and see a nice sandy texture that is looking like snow, honestly. A few moments later. Okay, so now I'm coming back to this. And all I'm going to do, all right, so I'm gonna just take an old junk brush and start brushing. And what this is gonna do is just kind of break up all of the baking soda and enable me to start revealing this base. So now you can see that this is actually starting to chip off around the edges. Now that leaves you with a choice. You can either do it all over and if you're going to reapply this, I recommend taking some of your Mod Podge and water and water down and brush those areas and then cover it and then cover it with baking soda. That way you're not spraying the whole thing and getting this all wet again. I think I might try to get all of the edges off now that I see it. Because I really like how 3DXM carves out the actual bases he does. He kind of has the same technique for all of the bases. Or most of them, not all. But it's kind of a cool look to be able to have just your edge in another color. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just break this off here but if it doesn't break off easy you can always take you know the end of your brush or if you have any specialty tools you can just use those to scrape it off like that too and i'm just going to brush this real good And there we go. So now I've got a really nice looking texture on here. I am going to kind of brush away on the rock where the silly putty is protecting. So now I'm going to take my precision tweezers and start taking off this silly putty. And if everything works out well, it should just peel off pretty easily. That is the beautiful thing about Silly Putty. <sighs> now, 
And then I'm just going to take my brush and kind of br brush it around there to kind of even around that edge. Like that. So I'm going to take my Moon Knight and kind of depress him. So a terrible thing happened while I was doing this is I was trying to make sure my Moon Knight would fit and it broke off some of the baking soda. Now that this has happened, I am going to just go ahead and try to make this look natural. This is the thing about when you do these kind of techniques. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And a failure is only a learning experience. But I want to show you my failures and just to prove that it happens to everyone. So I essentially have two routes that I could take right now. I could clear this off 100%. Like I could easily scratch this off right now because I was dumb and I didn't give this a full like three or four hours to dry. Or I could actually see what else. When problems arise like this, there's always other options. And that's why I wanted to show you this mess up of mine. Because I, now that I see it, I kind of like the idea of this is being more drifting sand than just standing in a sand dune. So now I'm going to take my Moon Knight and make sure he fits perfectly. And I want to see where his feet lie. So now I can see that I've got an imprint here and there's more of an imprint right here. So I am going to brush all of this away so he sits flat on his base. And if it starts chipping off, that's fine. I don't care because I want to see what this looks like by just making it random. So right here, I got to go around this edge a little more to get his foot in there and I'm just tapping it to get it off. And there we go. So now I'm going to take him again and see what he looks like now. So now I know he's going to sit perfectly flat. So you can see right there. And now I've got more of these sandy dunes. And I'm just going to brush this away. And now what I'm going to do is nothing. Now that I've got it exactly how I want it, because I like how it's kind of misformed right here and I like how it is right here off the edge. So now that he sets flat on here, I have my sandy dune. I've turned my sandy dune into just drifting sand on this platform of some sort. So I'm going to go ahead, let this sit here and I will come back to it tomorrow when it's fully dry key there. But the big takeaway here is when you mess up something, you can either freak out or I want you to not look at it as, oh no, I've completely destroyed this, now what do I do? Look at it as an opportunity because sometimes things like this can make your model just turn out awesome. It's those things that you would have never tried and never thought of only in that exact situation. So here we are in a completely different situation than I was originally intending. But I think it's actually going to look really cool. So, well, let's let this dry and I will come back tomorrow. Tomorrow for sure. All right, so now I am back the next day and all I'm going to do now is just lightly brush all of the baking soda that is now officially stuck and not clumping off on me. And it comes off really easily. You can even tap it to make sure it's going to come off. And that is really it. All right, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I need to seal this. So what I'm gonna use is this Krylon matte finish and this will give me some nice coverage. And all I'm gonna do is do a couple light coats of it to be able to seal all of that baking soda together. Then we're gonna go ahead and paint it. So I'm gonna go ahead, jump over to the spray booth, do that real quick, and then I'll be right back. So first I'm going to take this Apple Barrel Khaki and I'm just gonna coat the whole thing with it. 
And one thing to note, when I'm doing this effect, I'm not using a good brush. So this is an older brush because you do run the risk of getting baking soda in your brush and it'll just ruin it. So this isn't a, this isn't a very good brush. So if it gets ruined, I don't really care. And as you can see, I'm essentially kind of just dabbing it. It doesn't really work because it's such a rough texture to just kind of stroke it like that, like you normally would. So I just kind of dab the paint on there. Another way to do this is if you have an airbrush, you can easily airbrush this. I'm just wanting to show that you can also do it with a brush. So there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry and then just come right back to it. All right, so the first coat is nice and dry. Now I have a few spots that I've missed and I'm gonna go ahead and get those right now. So now I'm gonna take this parchment color from Folk Art and put it on my texture board. And then I'm gonna take my makeup brush and go ahead and get some paint on here. And then we're just going to do some dry brush on here. And just lightly doing some dry brush on the ridges. So you can see it gives a little bit of a highlight and some definition. So that is all of the dry brush that I'm going to do to this. Now the next thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of an ink wash on the rocks themselves. I'm not going to paint them. I'm actually just going to put an ink wash on them. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this soft tone quick shade from the Army Painter. And all I'm going to do is put a few drops in there and all I'm going to do is just grab a little bit on my brush and start painting just the rocks and this will give it a nice tone while still kind of keeping the same color palette and this will just essentially give it a darker tone for the rocks because I don't want to paint these like gray like normal rocks I want them to have a limestone feel so that's why I'm using a wash. It's just going to darken the tone of those rocks so you can see right there. And I'm just going to go through and paint all of these. So now I'm just going to let these dry and then I might do just a little bit of a dry brush to dull them back, but we'll see. Okay, so these dried just a little darker than I wanted, so I'm going to go ahead and do some dry brushing on this with that same color just to kind of dull some of the edges of those rocks. So it's been worn by sand. There we go. I like that. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is take some black paint and clean up these edges. I really like it when the edges of my bases are black. It just kind of gives that good contrast to it. All right, so here's a little trick I do sometimes when I'm doing the smaller bases. I'll take just a bottle cap, and what I'll do is I'm going to hold it like that and spin it and painting the edge. But when I'm done, I'm going to just set it on the bottle cap so it's lifted off the ground and anything I get on the bottom isn't going to get everywhere. Okay, so there we go. Set that on there and I'm just going to let that dry. So once this dries, we are going to be ready to glue on our Moon Knight and we will be done with the project. All right, so now he is ready for glue and I am just putting some glue on his feet and dropping my glue. Cap this. And here we go. Just got to put it on there. And there we go. So now he is ready for the final reveal. And here he is. I think he turned out awesome. 
I love how dirty and gritty he is with those highlights and shadows and just that texture. I love how gritty he looks and also just how everything came together with that base. And again, I want to remind you, anytime that you think you've messed up your model in some form or fashion, don't look at it as a failure. Look at it as an opportunity. What could you do in this situation to make it better? I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I just want to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.